Would you mind joining me in a round of Do You Hear the People Sing? Ah, uh, Admiralty Hong Kong. I remember being here two years ago during the Umbrella Movement. In 2014, the people of Hong Kong, mainly young people, took to the streets for 79 days to protest for their right to directly elect their leader. Something Beijing promised under the one country, two system policy, but spoiler alert, they lied. I remember it all so clearly. That's where I slept in a tent, right where that BMW is driving by. Over there, that was the Lenin Wall. Oh, I can almost see student leader Joshua Wong giving a rousing speech. Oh wait, that is Joshua Wong. Joshua! Joshua! Joshua. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Do you mind if I get an interview with you? Oh, of course. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, can we go somewhere quieter? Yeah, than that's anyone? It's better. All right, let's go. Okay. Well, Joshua, thank you for agreeing to be interviewed. Um, what's it like for you to be back here at Admiralty? Um, it's the place two years ago we occupied and to create a miracle or even the history of Hong Kong. And it's also a place that now I work in because I'm already the assistant of legislator uh, Nathan Law. Do you think someday they'll build big statues of you? Uh, I mean, it's too far away, in fact, yeah. <laughs> You're being too modest. Uh, would you consider another mass movement like the umbrella? Next year, March, will be the chief executive election. I believe it will be a critical point for Hong Kongers to have a massive social movement to show our anger to the interference of Beijing again. Mm. Uh, how do you think that will be different from two years ago? Um, I would say that there's too much uncertainty. After the umbrella movement and with the bookseller incident happened of kidnapped from Hong Kong to China, um, how I've been detained in Bangkok airport because Thai government hoped to remain a good relationship with China, and how um, disqualified of two pro-independence legislators. It seems that uh, we already faced the failure of one country, two system, and with the erode of high degree autonomy, uh, the path of Hong Kong towards democracy is really far away, in fact. Do you think there's any hope for maintaining a one country, two systems policy with the Communist Party? Uh, hope for the best, prepare for the worst. It's a long-term battle. Uh, we, I can see the hope from people, but I can't see the hope from Communist Party. That people are always the trigger point to create a miracle. That's why it would be a motivator for me to continue to fight. I still have hope to Hong Kongers. And you've uh, co-founded a new political party, Democisto. Uh, what are the goals of that party? What we hope is to push for a self-determination movement. Uh, we believe Hong Kong has gained the right of self-determination can through a democratic procedure or even referendum to decide the constitution and sovereignty of Hong Kong after the end of 50 years unchanged policy in 2047. And what does Democisto think about uh, Hong Kong independence? Is that different from self-determination? Uh, in fact, uh, in the policy platform of Democisto, we do not advocate uh, independence. But what we believe is the sovereignty of Hong Kong should be decided by people in Hong Kong. That's why, uh, of course, pro-Beijing force, they would hope to turn one country, two system to be one country, one system. But in the referendum, no matter one country, one system, one country, two system, uh, complete autonomy or independence, they can also be the possible option to let Hong Kongers decide their future. And in the Democisto Manifesto, it says people should rise up. Are you sure that's a good idea? Um, I would say that now Hong Kongers are facing the largest communist regime in the world. It will be a long-term battle uh, after the umbrella movement and we may feel downhearted and depressed. But after the legislative council election and 
with the positive result of new generation and a civil society force can enter the institution, it already proved that it is still the strike that we need to continue to fight for. And in America, there's the feeling that young people don't care about politics. Why is Hong Kong making America look bad? Um, I would say that um, just like the presidential election, uh, of course it's hard for uh, the majority, uh, young, or young generation or university student to involve or support those mainstream candidates. But how they involved in the crowdfunding campaign of Bernie Sanders, it already proved that uh, young people, they may be uh, dissatisfied with the old or exist institution, traditional politician, but they would still hope to gain the new voices and the force to get to give the change to the system. It's also the reason for me to found the political party after the end of umbrella movement. It's necessary for us to keep the momentum and let people in Hong Kong or even in the world to know that young generation in Hong Kong will still continue to strike on the street, but also enter the institution to be the legislator. Uh, so recently you met with politicians in the U.S. What, uh, what's your hopes for the U.S. getting involved? Um, the threat of China is not just only affecting people in Hong Kong, China or Taiwan. It affects all of the Southeast Asia or Asia Pacific. Just like I've been blacklisted by Malaysia and Thai government detained me all because they hope to maintain the foreign relationship with China and Beijing government. So uh, I would say that uh, I just urge the international community to keep the eyes in Hong Kong and just like uh, how Senator Rubio and Cotton have raised the Hong Kong Human Rights and Democracy Act to show the support of the international community on the democracy movement in Hong Kong, it will be a positive trend in the future. Now, you and I have both been accused of being in the CIA. Are you a part of the CIA? <laughs> of course not. Yeah, they would say that I'm a CIA agent and also uh, uh, blame that or uh, I've been controlled uh, by I've been receiving the training from US Marine but uh, I just remember the comment of my peers um, compared to your body size with Tom Cruise of course you're not CIA agent <laughs> yeah well that is exactly what a CIA agent would say <laughs> so what is your view on um, Yao Wai Ching and Baggy Lung's oath taking um, I am quite uh, I would say that I disagree of using this kind of racist term to uh, deliver the message in the oath. If they support Hong Kong independence, they can just directly voice out the slogan of demanding Hong Kong independence instead of using this kind of uh, terms or uh, verbs to elaborate on their political stand. Uh, but I would say that um, the disqualified that uh, by Beijing is just proving how Beijing betray and ignore the promise in the joint declaration, especially on how they, um, how they would try to override the judicial system and legislature and uh, whole of the system is just fulfilling the interests of Beijing. And just to clarify for the audience, uh, when you mentioned the slur, it was the specific use of the term China, yeah. which uh, was what the Japanese referred to as Chinese people during World War II, and so it's become somewhat yeah. of a racial slur. Yeah. Okay. And you were refused entry to both Thailand and Malaysia. Are there other countries that you're banned from visiting? Of course, mainland China. <laughs> yeah, and um, I've been invited by the activist group in Singapore that supports almost a year, but because due to my personal safety, and I just suggested to have a Skype conference with them because uh, I, I, I don't want to be detained in the Bangkok in the detention cell again. Are you concerned for your safety? I know you've gotten beaten up. Uh... Uh, it will quite be, it, it's really inconvenient. Being a Hong Kongist, uh, I have been blacklisted by most of the Southeast Asia country already. So no matter uh, my, uh, to have uh, in a holiday, if I hope to get a trip uh, overseas, yeah, my option is quite uh, is li limited. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I know when you were just 18, Fortune magazine listed you as one of the greatest leaders in the world. Do you have any advice for other aspiring great leaders? I'm, I'm asking for a friend. Um, I would say that 
um, Fortune magazine in 1997 have the uh, cover story with the title of The Death of Hong Kong. But 18 years later, they choose me to be the uh, 10 greatest leader in the world. Uh, I'm not saying that uh, I'm the greatest leader in the world. Actually, I disagree on it. But I think it's just proof to the world. Um, if you guys think that uh, Hong Kong is already deaf, it's wrong. Uh, we face the death of one country, two system. We face the failure of high degree autonomy. But it's not the death of Hong Kong because Hong Kong is still passionate and have our courage and will keep on to fight for democracy. One more question. Um, would you mind joining me in a round of Do You Hear the People Sing? Do you, you hear, hear the people sing? Sing, sing the, the song of angry men. men. This is the music of the people who will not be slave again. When the beating of your heart echoes the beating of your drum. This is the light that sounds certain tomorrow come. Yeah, I love your YouTube channel. We got that on camera. Great. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Josh. Please subscribe it. <laughs> subscribe, yes, yes. Okay.